Hi, everybody. So good to see you. Thank you so much for joining us for our June meeting of our Quilted Joy Clubhouse. Um, I would love to see where you're watching from. So over in the comments, put you know, your city and state of where you are. We love to see how widespread our following is and how many states are represented. So thank you so much for being here with me today. Um, now, our guild meetings are normally live streamed. So we do them on the fly with you watching. Um, but this particular month, I am on vacation. So we actually recorded this last week. And then Kelsey and Melanie are monitoring the playback. So if you do have any questions, go ahead and post them and they will answer them to the best of their ability. If there's anything they're not sure about, then I'll address it when I get back. But right now, I'm on a beach drinking a pina colada while you're watching this. So, so if you've got any questions, do post them over there. And I do want to be sure that you sign up for our Quilted Joy newsletter. Um, we have lots of great tips and tricks and tutorials and information in there. Um, we've got um, links that we send out for interesting things that are happening in the quilt world, um, especially in the machine quilting side of the quilt world, both sit down and stand up. So you'll find that link there on screen. We also have a clickable link down in the description, um, but do make sure you're signed up because we'll notify you and remind you about an upcoming live stream guild meetings as well as any events that we have. Um, I may be teaching close to you, so all of those things so that you are notified of what's going on in our little uh, clubhouse world. So do look for that. Um, today, um, this month, we're going to be focusing on quilting that you can fit in small sashing spaces. So many times you'll have a quilt that has like a one inch or half inch sashing space and you're not quite sure what to do with that tiny little area. And if you look at your batting, it'll tell you how closely you need to quilt your batting. So many times a batting will say you have to quilt every four to eight inches to keep that batting consistent as you wash it as it ages. And so if you think about a sashing space, yeah, it's only an inch tall, so not a big deal, right? But it might be 40, 50, 60, 70 inches long along the length of your quilt. And so you will need a little bit of quilting in that space if it's you know super long, but even though it's, it's super skinny. So let's look at some common things that you could put in a sashing space. And I've got my computer here so that we can draw on the screen screen. And I think one of the most common things that you'll see is just a little wiggle line, just a little squiggly wiggly line. And this is super effective and really simple. So a little squiggly line. My personal favorite in little tiny spaces is a branched curl. So I curl in, tuck my tail way in, come back out to the base. In this case, if you think about this as a face of a clock, so here's 12 o'clock, here's three o'clock, here's six o'clock, here's nine o'clock. So I went past 12 into the face of my clock and came back up and stopped at 12 o'clock. And once I got back up to my 12 o'clock, I head down, now I go to six o'clock. Again, the face of a clock, so here's nine, here's three, here's six, here's 12. So I went to my six o'clock base, curled into the center of my clock face and came back out to that six o'clock position. And that gets me ready then when I hit that six o'clock position to kick back up into that 12 o'clock position. And literally this is going on in my head is six o'clock, 12 o'clock, six o'clock, 12 o'clock, back and forth, back and forth. And that's a pretty um, common way that I'll do small spaces. Um, another thing you might see a lot is ribbon candy. So ribbon candy um, or figure eights is a nice way to eat up a small space. And um, this, since it touches the ditch so often, it can also give you a faux ditch if you don't want to take the time to actually stitch in the ditch on your small sashing spaces. Do notice, check yourself, do you see how I'm kissing my neighbor, how I'm coming over here and each time I'm kissing the previous figure eight. If I don't touch the previous figure eight, if there's space there, I just want you to see it looks a little odd, right? It just looks a little funky. So I encourage you to really swing out and kiss your neighbor, swing out and kiss your neighbor, swing out and kiss your neighbor, and that will um, help that look uh, pretty nice. Uh, you may have seen wishbones. So wishbones, infinity signs, um, they're all kind of called the same thing. And wishbones can really um, expand and contract uh, along a variety of size uh, spaces. So they're very versatile. Some people like to really space them out far. So more like that in a small space. 
And that also looks nice too. Another idea for you would be pearls. So pearls are circles side by side. So I'm gonna start with my first circle and then I overstitch half of it until I can kick out to the next circle. And then I overstitch half of it until I can kick out to the next circle. So if you notice every other circle is going in the opposite direction that I started. So if I do this circle counterclockwise, the next one is clockwise. And so what it means is that every other pearl has backstitching on it. And that's where I snuck around half that circle so that I can then enter my next circle. So those are pearls. Another idea would just be, um, would just be E's or L's. So that's a pretty simple little way to fill in a small sashing space, little lowercase E's or lowercase L's. You could also do little bunny hops. So just a bunny hop like this, especially if you are up next to piecing that already gives you the dividing lines because the danger here is some of your bunnies could be small and then all of a sudden your bunnies get big. So you need to have consistent bunnies. And so if you've got a sashing that's right up next to some patchwork, you could follow the divisions of the patchwork so that you have evenly spaced bunny hops. Um, other ideas would just be diagonal lines, so chevrons. Again, I would follow if there's patchwork right up next to this um, small sashing space. That would give you some clear targets so that your chevrons remain consistent. Um, another idea would be um, just even a backwards curl. So let me see if I can come in here and do it. So I just do a curl this way and a bunny hop and a curl this way and a bunny hop and a curl this way and a bunny hop. So lots of little um, ideas for small spaces. Let's stitch some of these out. I've got some strips here sewn together and these are one inch finished and we'll just start here so that you could get a sense of what it might look like. So just that initial um, wavy line, wiggle line that we, we talked about before. So that would be one way that you could easily do a small sashing space. Um, another idea would be that curl design that we talked about before, and I told you that curl design, that's actually my, my favorite way to do a small sashing space. So that curl design, that six o'clock, 12 o'clock, if you've ever taken a class from me, um, you probably heard me talk about six o'clock, 12 o'clock. So I go back up to 12, now I'm at six, and I do have this machine on manual mode because it just helps the camera um, a little bit better. So six o'clock, 12 o'clock. The other thing that we talked about were those figure eight designs. So those ribbon candy designs and really kick out and kiss your neighbor. And you may find for small spaces, if you have a hopping foot um, or if you're a sit down quilter, you could change the foot to, if you have a hopping foot that is an open toed hopping foot, that may help you see just a little bit better. Let's do some of that wishbone. Um, infinity symbol. Like I said, that one can be close together, it can be far apart, but it really does fill up a small space nicely. Let's make it a little further apart, just so that you can see what that looks like a little further apart. Super effective and goes pretty fast. Um, another one that we talked about were those uh, um, pebbles or pearls. So let's take a look at that in our next little area. So we're gonna start out with a circle. I'm just gonna bring my bobbin up here to the top. So I'm gonna start out with a circle and I'm gonna backtrack along half of the previous circle. So if I enter one circle clockwise, the next circle I will enter counterclockwise. And I have something in my head, whether I'm thinking about quarters or nickels or dimes, I'm just trying to keep them all consistent by having something in my head so that I repeat that size shape. Um, we talked about chevrons. So that's another fairly easy way. Again, I would use the piecing in the patchwork beside the sashing to keep those pretty consistent. And we also talked about bunny hops. So let's just do a bunny hop and a bunny hop. And if you felt like you needed to fill that in, you could even go in and just put a little lowercase e, lowercase e, lowercase e, 
And that would be one way to fill in some space. So I hope those sashing spaces helped you, those sashing ideas um, helped you. There's so many that you could put in that small space, but do consider your, whatever your batting tells you, that will kind of drive um, what you're gonna put in those um, salt, it'll drive the, the density level that you need to have uh, for those small sashing spaces. Um, I wanted to thank APQS, our sponsor. Um, they are handcrafted in Iowa and they're loved the world over. They do have a lifetime warranty. If you're interested in a long arm quilting machine, you can visit your local APQS store, talk to your local APQS dealer, or give them a ring. You can visit them at apqs.com. So thanks APQS. Um, we also have a, uh, a really great looky loo, looky loo tour for you. Heather Dido agreed to give us a look around her studio. We're joined today by Heather Dito from Custom Quilting with Heather Dito, and she's going to give us a nice looky loo tour around her studio. So, hello, Heather. Hi, Angela. Nice to see you, nice to see you too. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. I am looking forward to seeing your studio. How long have you been long arm quilting? Four years. Four years, but you were quilting long before that. Yeah, I've been quilting total for about 15 years. I got my long arm from you um, four yeah. years in March, I think. Four years. That's hard to believe that much time has gone by. Well, yeah. show, show us what you've got, because you've got a little different setup, don't you? Where is your studio located? Mine is right inside um, my front. It's kind of my front room in my house. So I have my front door over here, and then you walk in. And there's my room. Can you kind of Perfect. see everything? So was this like a family room? Yeah, everything? it would be like the family room or the front room of the house. And then I kind of mm -hmm. claimed this little wall as my own. That's... Um, like a drop leaf table where you can unfold it and I use that for cutting. Okay, so, so right in the front of my house. That's perfect. And you've got a nice window there to look out. Yep. Yeah, and then you've got, let's see the storage that you've got going on underneath these the machine. These are, these yeah. are Ikea cabinets. I oh. love them. I got my pantos in here. Oh, that's a great way to store them. Yeah. More pantos. Uh-huh. Rulers, can you see them fine? And then this is my thread which I like to color code it. You like to color code it? Yeah, we'll like put it in order of uh -huh. these so you can see them all. Got it. Yeah, but I love these cabinets. They're awesome. Yeah, and you know, story uh, pantographs is always a little tricky. So that's, that's really nice that you've got them laid out that way. Yep, and then um, behind my table, I have more. Oh, that's that Stonehenge fabric that's yes. so popular right now. That's the panel. Uh -huh. I'm doing a one black wonder with it. Fabulous. And then let's see if we can see. And then down here is where Whoa. I have my fabric. Wow. And all the totes. Fantastic. Yeah, and somewhere in there is a bunch of quilt tops that need to be quilted. <laughs> <laughs> So you've got your design wall over there. You've got yep. I saw piecing rulers on a table behind yep. it. So Those okay. are there. And so then I keep my, um, my bobbin winder for my long arm here. Uh -huh. A cordless iron, uh -huh. which can you see it? Yeah. Which I use to steam the quilts when they're on the frame. Well, it's right there. The a little rolling cart with some little necessities on it. And then my big roll of batting. It's not in the best spot, uh huh. but it works there. It fits. And do you have it um, suspended on something or how no, it's- it... Right now it's sitting on a big giant box. Oh, okay. <laughs> so what do you keep in your little tray there that you- um, I oh. have on the top, let me see if I'm trying, can you see it? Yeah. I have like a seam ripper, my markers, my little scoop foot. Just water, um, my starch should actually be by my iron, but I have this, I hate, oh, hold on. I hate ironing. Uh -huh. um, you spray it on like if you have a really bad wrinkle or crease and then just kind of brush over with your hand and it helps to take the wrinkles out. Oh, cool. When steaming won't cut it. Uh huh. Yeah. And I see that you've got some uh, boards there on the machine to hold up the clamp yeah. so the yeah. gravity won't pull them down. Yeah, they're just big giant dowel rods. Oh, uh, got it. Got it. Yeah. And so you've got your quilt top bar taped up so you float everything? Yes, I float um, all my tops. Mm -hmm. and, um, and you quilt for others? I do. 
Yeah. So, you know. And do you do mostly all over edge to edge or do you do custom stuff? Um, I do both. I have a couple of customers that come to me just for custom. I just finished a custom quilt and it was about eight hours on about a 70 by 70 inch square quilt. So yeah, it can take some time. Can it? Yeah. I enjoy it though. It's, it can take a long time. Um, it can be not ag just time consuming with the design process, but it's really rewarding in the end, especially uh -huh. when you have a contesting thread on the back and you can flip it over and see all of your hard work. And I tell some customers, I'm like, just look at it from the back. It's prettier on the back. <laughs> yeah, you got a, you got a two-sided quilt that way. So what do you love the most about your quilting space? Um, that it's here, but I'm not away from my family. I'm still kind of in the heart of the home. You know, I have the bedrooms upstairs, the living room, the kitchen. Everything's just still here. I'm not hidden away. Yeah. Well, big kudos to your husband for agreeing to allow you to overtake the family room. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, he was going to put me in the basement. So this is yeah. better. <laughs> yeah. But that that does. It keeps you in the flow of things. The kids yeah. can always be talking to you and asking questions. Yeah. When and yeah. with summertime coming, my daughter's constantly playing outside. So I can keep an eye on her and know what's going on. Perfect. Yeah. Well, what, what's something you wish you could change about your quilting space? I wish I had about two more feet. <laughs> yeah. Just so then I could have my machine straight because I it might be kind of hard to see, but she is at an angle. Oh, and I see I, that now. Yeah, because that otherwise you can't get into the kitchen because there's the kitchen door. Right. So if I had about two more feet, then I could have her straight. Uh -huh. But other than that, it's great. So is that a 12-foot table that you have? Yeah, this is 12-foot. Okay. And so, yeah, so a couple more feet would allow you to, to not have to have her at an angle, but it, it is nice for folks to see that, but consider if you're looking at space, you could yeah. always put it at an angle and, and yeah. put it in a room smaller than you think you can. Yep. And then I have a nice little sewing cubby back in the corner with my sewing machine with it being at the angle. So it works out. Yeah. So when you're in there, do you have a TV or are you listening to podcasts or music or what? Um, I'll listen to music sometimes, but usually I can hear the TV in the living room because the kids are watching it or the kids are on their iPads watching videos or if I want to be kind of a way, I'll put my earbuds in and listen to music. So, yeah. Well, I can tell by your uh, thread drawers that Glide is your favorite thread. Oh, yeah. By far. Yeah, because you have a bunch of that. Um, what kind of batting do you like to use? I prefer um, a cotton batting, like warm and white, warm and natural. It doesn't stretch. Um, like the polys do, or even like the 80 20. So it's a little bit easier to manage under the quilts. And do you find that you have a lot of local customers who are bringing you quilts, or do you have more mail in customers that are sending you quilts? Mine are all local. Local. Within about, um, within about 20 miles of me. And do you meet them there at the house, or do you meet them somewhere else? Um, some come to my home, some I meet at a local quilt shop. They're kind enough to take in quilts for me and let me pick up and drop off. Awesome. Awesome. Well, um, so what three recommendations would you have uh, for us, Heather, that you would recommend to your bestie? Not necessarily about quilting. It could be about anything. But what three things would you uh, offer up as a recommendation? Um, my new favorite movie is The Greatest Showman. It's an awesome movie. I tried finding my DVD case, but I couldn't find it. Um, <laughs> a tool, hopefully this is the right way, are these Ulfa um, endurance blades. Yeah. Oh, have you, have you used one? Yes. Oh, yeah. My yeah. God. There's like, you, like no pressure. You just put yeah. it on there and push and it yeah. cuts the fabric. Um, and then definitely a guild or an online quilting group or just a group, of, just another friend to help kind of push you to to, you know, do a custom or step out of your comfort zone or even advice and inspiration is important too. Yeah, a little yeah. cheerleader. You got it, a little right. cheerleader or somebody who will nag you and kind of push you to do stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, that's, that's the whole reason we started the clubhouse was to try to connect people. Because sometimes long arm quilting can be a solitary thing and, oh, yeah, and yeah. to connect with other long armers is important. Oh, definitely. Um, Piecers can track their machines to the local guild meeting and have it. And so it's a little harder with a long arm machine. Yeah, yeah I really enjoy the quilted clubhouse because it's, like you said, you don't find stuff for long armors really. And you can't take your long arm with you. So the more inspiration you can get, the better. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Heather. How can people connect with you online? Where can we find you? You can find me on Facebook. Um, just Custom Quilting by Heather Dito. Fabulous. All right. Thanks, Heather. Thank you. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Right,
Don't you love looking at other people's spaces? If you would like to share your space, we would love to have you volunteer. You can send us a message through the Quilted Joy Clubhouse uh, Facebook group. You could also send it to me, Angela at quiltedjoy.com or use our contact page there at quiltedjoy.com. Um, we'd love to find a month that would work for you so that we could take a peek at how you have things um, organized. Don't think that you have to have some fancy um, area like Heather has. It can be in your basement, which is where mine uh, was in my house. So um, whatever you have, we'd love to take a look at it. Just uh, raise your hand and volunteer because we'd love to see it. Let's take a look at some of my favorite things that I've walked into the shop recently. So this one um, we had and it disappeared. You all gobbled it up really fast. So we got two more bolts of it. This is Cat Happy by Wyndham. So it has lots of little white kitty cat faces. And then there's an occasional little Siamese um, uh, black kitty cat mixed in with all the others. Um, super adorable um, it is directional so if you do get that for a backing fabric just make sure that you know that all the kitty cats are lined up north south um, so that um, you have enough yardage for your backing fabric um, there were other backing fabrics that came into the shop just today this one is by free spirit and this one is called dots and it's these are all 108 inch width so this one is why uh, violet and then we also have the version that is indigo I love both of these. Let me see if I can move this over a little bit. There. So indigo and violet. And we've got um, a link there in the description if you want to find these on the, um, on the website. And there's also a link in the description to all of our fabrics. So these are brand new from Free Spirit and I think they're lovely and they feel fabulous. Um, they're, they've got a really nice weight to the fabric. Um, they'll be beautiful for a quilt back. Um, okay, so let's look at our segment that we, we call How Do We Quilt This? And over in the clubhouse, we ask people to um, post a photo of a quilt that they would like some help with um, kind of trying to think through what to actually quilt on the quilt top. And so I select one each month and then we focus on it here in our guild meeting. So um, Barbara, <laughs> Barbara posted a photo that really intrigued me. So let's take a look at her quilt um, that she submitted. So I have it here on my computer for you to see. And this quilt top, um, I, I really like it for a lot of reasons. One is, I don't know what the name of that block is, Barbara, but it's very different. It almost reminds me of um, a little bow tie, a little present bow package on each of those um, points of the star. So really interesting block and it has a lot of structure that I thought we could take a look at. So my initial thought when I saw um, Barbara's quilt was just how structured it is. So you've got these yellow, I'm going to just zoom in here a little bit so that you can see a little bit better. So you have these yellow portions here and then these dark green and I thought wouldn't it be great if you could connect these, right, so that these kind of visually cross under the sashing and connect with the block on the other side. So that's where my brain first went. And the other thing that did for me is that it connected or it created a, um, a square here. So if you notice this kind of, there's a floating white square there behind um, the each of these blocks that's created. Um, so. I'm not sure what size these blocks are, but I started to think about some of these small sashing spaces that we talked about today and how if you actually echoed these divider lines, now granted I'm drawn on my computer so they don't look super straight, but you would want them straight. So you would have these divider lines and then in that smaller negative space that it creates, you could place some of these small sashing designs that we talked about today. So we, we talked about, um, let's see, I need to change over to my drawing. So we talked about, um, oh, uh, those um, wishbony shapes. So I could put some wishbony shapes here to kind of really give it some lattice and some structure throughout the quilt. So I think that would look nice. So let's take a look at what that looked like um, all together. So don't say that. So here's um, a view. Let me zoom in a little bit, Barbara. So that shows the initial first lines. I'm gonna zoom out so you can see that. 
Um, and I'm just using, it's called Paintbrush. It's a free application I have on my Mac. You probably have something already on your computer that would allow you to draw on a, a picture of a quilt to get some ideas. Here's the double line that we just looked at. So I'm gonna zoom in. So that's that double line creating that smaller sashing space that's crossing under the existing sashing design. I'm gonna zoom out so you can see how that really adds a lot of structure and bones to this quilt. And then in that small sashing space, that's where I went through and I did that little uh, wishbone-y thing. So let's take a look at that. So there's those little wishbone-y things that are carried through and they duck under the sashing and go um, across to the other side. Now, I'm not showing it to you in the, um, how I would quilt it and what I would quilt first, second, and third. What I'm showing you is how I designed it. So first I kind of think about what I want to put on the quilt and then I start to think about my actual path. So that's what it looks like with all of that um, kind of structure and lattice work behind there. So then I started to think about um, what I could put in these, um, in these white squares that go behind um, the sashing spaces where they kind of connect. So I'm just kind of peeping, making sure that I'm telling you the, the next step here. I'm going to zoom in. And so let's look at this negative space that's created where these um, uh, blocks meet. And what I thought about doing was how could I kind of create um, a star unit or a flower unit um, in this space here, in that, that white um, block there. So let's take a look at what I did. I'm just gonna zoom in to this one so you can see. So this is what I came up with. So it's a loop to the point and a loop up here. So let's take a look at that. Let's draw it on this one here. So I went to a loop up to a point and a loop up to here. So if you imagine, I'm going to change my color because this may help you. If you imagine there's a miter line here, yeah? And so I, when I do this loop, I want to stay on this side of the miter and go up to that point and then stay on this side of the miter and go to this point. And so that may actually help you if you want to draw that on your quilt so that you can keep these loops to the, the side of the divider line that you're working with. It's up to you if you want to do that or not. Um, and then I got to thinking about, you know, when I touch the tip of this green area, this green star point, that would be a great place to dip in. And there's so many leaves and flowers on this quilt that that's where I could dip in and put a little leaf design, a little leaf shape with a, a vein. Every time I touch the point of one of these stars. And so when I'm working around my block, so I'm just going to come down here to do this one. So when I'm working around my block, this is where I would, I would put a leaf shape in with a vein. I would do my point up. I would do my point to here. Leaf shape with a vein. And um, continue around. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So here's what it looks like um, with those leaf shapes and that kind of star that's floating behind the sashing. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so you can see it all together. Yeah, and then I'm gonna zoom back in so you can see what we were just working on. So that allows these kind of secondary blocks that are floating to come forward. Okay, so then the next thing I started to think about, um, let me just be sure that I, have, okay, so I'm gonna close, I'm just gonna move this one to the side. Um, so the next one would be talking about um, those uh, interior spaces. So I'm going to zoom in. So what to do with that interior space? Okay, and this is what I came up with. Again, using those leaves as a jumping off point. So what I did is I came into this um, I'm, I would enter, like here's an entry point right here, that would be a good entry point, right here would be a good entry point, right here would be a good entry point, as I'm thinking about how I'm going to quilt this um, block in one continuous path. And so what I did is I just put a little triangle on this smaller uh, yellow space, and then I did a bunny hop over to where the square and square touches with a curl. And now I'm going to enter into the center area and I'm just going to do that same leaf shape with a, vine, with a, a vein. And then I'm going to do a bunny hop up to here. And then I'm going to do that little bow tie kind of triangle shapes. 
bunny hop, curl. This is where now I can come down and put in a, a leaf with a vein and a bunny hop with the triangle bow tie, bunny hop, and a curl. And then do my little leaf with a vein, bunny hop, bow tie, and a bunny hop, and a curl, final leaf, and a vein, and a bunny hop. So that's what I did for the center. All right, okay, so let's take a look at that. So that's what it looks like close up. Let's zoom out so we can see that a little bit better. So now I have my basic structure for my blocks. I'm focusing in on my blocks. I've created a lattice for them to stand upon and I've created a secondary block out of where those white spaces touch. So now I started to think about the sashing and about this cornerstone with where um, the quilt itself uh, comes together. So let's take a look at what I came up with. So here's what I came up with. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so as you can see. So in those sashing spaces, I um, did just a, a basic X and then went up into a triangle. And I didn't use straight lines here, I used curved lines just to make it easier on myself. And where those leaf tips come out, that's where I dip down to travel. So the, this could be stitched out in one pass and really it could be stitched out um, yeah, in one pass so that I can um, do this little loopy flower here and then I can dip down and drop into my sashing space. So let's take a look at that. So I'm just gonna zoom in here and um, I'm in my sashing space and I'm going to um, dip in um, to that sashing space. So I would dip in to here and I would just go up and back and do a little um, triangle space here, and a triangle space here, and dip up and back, and then finish my triangle out. And this area, this negative space here, so there would be the same thing on this side, right? If you headed that way. This area here, I just went with a curve that way and a curve that way. All right, so again, here would be a little triangle space, right? And then to connect these, I did a curve that way and a bunny hop curve that way. All right, so let's take a look at what that looks like. So there it is with all of the sashings. So that I put those arches in. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see a little bit better. So there's those sashing spaces that really makes this whole block one unit and then I just connected them with a simple arch and that really frames out that block nicely but it gives a, the eye a secondary design to enjoy as well. All right, I'm gonna zoom back out and um, this outside border is um, very dark um, and so I wanted something that would kind of flow around the quilt. And since I'm using this leaf shape in here, I want to kind of repeat shapes so that they kind of pull the whole voice of the quilt in. So in that outside um, black area, that black border, I just put um, a leaf traveling around the outside of that quilt. And that left me with that pieced border on the far outside. And I do want you to notice that um, if they are, if you get a top or you have a top where they are lined up. So see how these flying geese aren't quite lined up with the sashing below it? That will influence your choices because you can't pull this design out into those outer borders because these don't directly line up with those sashing spaces. So you're gonna have to look at the math of it and see if you can pull those designs out to the piece border. Sometimes you can't. So in this pieced border, what I decided to do, I'm gonna zoom in so that you can see. So in the piece border, I just did a simple E, L, E in that um, goose, and then in the sky, a little curl, and then I just went up and down into the darker flying geese, and then um, a little diamond shape, up and down, curl, E, L, E, curl, up and down, little diamond shape, up and down, curl, E, L, E, curl, 
and that's what I did all around the outside. All right, Barbara, so I'm gonna zoom out here so you can see that's what I came up with for your quilt. That would be the custom quilting plan that I would use for your uh, quilt top. So I hope that you all enjoyed that. Um, I, that's how I would break it down as far as how I would design it, and then I would go in and start to think about my path that I would take so I could do as much of it as I could in one continuous path. We tend to get all bunched up if we can't figure out the continuous path. If you can't, just stop and start. It's no big deal. Um, you're not gonna you know, lose the quilting game show because you had more stops and starts than you wanted. Just stop and start. Um, so um, I hope that you enjoy that, Barbara. You don't have to quilt it that way. Um, but if you do, I'd love to see it. And I'd love to see how you quilt it anyway. So just post that back to the, to the clubhouse um, when you get done with it, because we'd all love to see what you came up with. Um, all right, so speaking of the Quilted Joy Clubhouse, we do have some show and tells that I wanted to show you. And I forgot to do this in our April meeting. So I've got some from April and I've got some uh, from May. So um, take a look at this one. Don't you love all of the colors that Albie O posted um, for this quilt top? Um, I, I just adore the lusciousness of the colors and the triangles. And then she just did a simple wave quilting over it. Great job, Albie. Um, Donna F posted this cute little um, Snoopy Ch Charlie Brown. Again, that wavy background um, that we just looked at for sashing, but it could be used for a background um, behind. Uh, this is a paper piece, little guy, little Charlie um, Brown guy. Super effective. I really like the curls um, going around the outside to frame him out as well. Nice job, Donna. Tammy posted this one. Um, this one is has that um, wishbone-y thing that's going around that center medallion, that center block that we just looked at. So it has a, a petal flower in the middle, and then that wishbone is in those... Um, um, rectangular spaces around it. Um, really great job, Tammy. And Joy, don't you love this? This is fabulous. I love her little flamingo. And look at how much fun that Joy had in the background filler. She's got little pebbles and swirls and, and feathery flower things. Just really fun and very effective. Nice job. Pat posted this one all over edge to edge. Don't you love how the white and the black really play off of each other in the piecing and the fabric selection on this one? Um, whoever gets to sleep under that one, Pat, is lucky. I really, really like that one. Tammy um, posted this one. Look at all of the little, um, I think she said that she made this for an air traffic control um, operator. So you can see the tower um, there in one of the lighter green squares and then the airplanes are flying um, throughout the patchwork. Really interesting design. Love that. And then she used very linear um, designs, a mixture of linear designs and some other um, motifs there for the quilting. Nice job, Tammy. Donna posted this one all over edge to edge. I really love um, two color quilts. I know this is like lime green and a, and a chartreuse and you know other kind of greens, but basically it's red and green. Um, really effective and nice and an all over edge to edge is perfect for that, Donna. Good job. Shirley posted this one. So you may have seen those dream big panels that are like wall hanging size. Well, Shirley did one that's a bed size and she had so much fun with this. She said she learned a, a, an incredible amount um, by, by forcing herself really to play um, in spaces um, that are created by the pebbles, uh, by the petals of this um, giant uh, dream big panel. Um, Diana posted these two. So the one up there in the upper left, that's that dream big panel we were just talking about, but smaller, that wall hanging size. But notice that she made, um, she made some triangles, some quarter triangles out of a second um, panel that she cut in quarters to frame out that center one. So really interesting way to use the dream big, um, uh, smaller wall hanging panel size. And then look at that, um, beautiful Lone Star that she did with the, she's got cross hatching and feathered wreaths and um, really a beautiful job there, Donna. Thank you so much for posting that. It was fun to see. Barbara um, did this great quilt and she did it all over with these little curls on it. So I just want you to see how much texture, you know, sometimes when you're, when you look at a quilt like this and you don't know what to do, um, that's your sign that you just should add some texture to it. So she chose a, a thread that blended well and she added these curls over the top and it just gives us luscious, rich texture to the whole quilt. Nice job, Barbara. So um, if you have a quilt that you would like to show off, I would love to see it. You can post it there in our Quilted Joy uh, Clubhouse on Facebook. Um, we'd love to kind of be your cheer cheerleaders and see what you're working on and um, tell you what a great job you did. So thanks so much for posting those and for letting us um, share them in the show and tell um, segment. So next month, we are going to talk about stops and starts and multiple ways of how to handle stops and starts. 
That one will be Wednesday, July 3rd at one o'clock. And I would love it if you would um, share a review or share the actual our actual live stream guild with one of your friends. Um, we do this for you and we hope that we are helping you kind of think about things in a new way. And I read every review personally. So um, please leave us a review and share it with your friends. We'd love to welcome more people in to join our live stream guild. So thank you so much. And I will see you Wednesday, July 3rd at one o'clock where we'll live stream the next meeting. Thanks.